Hello and welcome to another rosacea review. Today I'm going to be reviewing a high-end foundation. So this is the Dior Forever Perfect Makeup Everlasting Wear Pore Refining Effect and it looks like this. I'm a sucker for packaging as you may know and this has gorgeous kind of frosted glass. Ah, oh, it's so pretty. This has SPF 35, which is brilliant. Also says it's got shine control, which is amazing for someone like me that has super oily skin. I had some vouchers from Selfridges, and so I decided to go in and treat myself. I don't usually go for high-end makeup because one, it's expensive, obviously. And also I think that there's so much joy in finding cheap dupes. Like I love it when I find something from the high street that is incredible and does everything I want it to. And you also know that it only costs like seven pounds or something. I think you can't underestimate the power that luxury makeup has as well because you do feel so luxurious and you feel so kind of fancy when you're applying it and it does feel like more of an occasion so you could be you know you could be having a really bad day you could be feeling pretty horrible but then you whap out like a chanel lipstick or something and it just instantly makes you feel so much better so i can totally see it from both sides i can see why people only really buy high street i can see why some people only buy high end I'm kind of halfway in between. So let's just jump right in. I'm gonna be showing you how I apply the foundation on my bare face and how well it covers my rosacea redness. So as with all my foundation reviews, I'm going to apply the foundation to one side of my face and then compare the two so you can see how well the redness has been covered and then I'll kind of go through how it feels, how it applies, you know, the texture and all that kind of stuff. As usual, my skin is being quite well behaved. I don't think I've done a YouTube video yet where I've been having a flare up. Sod's law that I've just said that, so I'm probably due a massive flare up any day now. But at the moment, my redness is just my typical everyday usual redness, so my cheeks are always red, my nose is always red, just around my cheekbones and my temples is red. This side of my forehead is always typically red. I'm gonna go and apply Dior Forever Foundation to this side of my face, and then I'll compare the two. That was one quite light covering. And then you'll notice that I did a little bit of stippling just as a kind of very light second layer over my cheek and cheekbones. I would say that this is definitely high coverage. As you can see, the redness, although my redness isn't very severe at the moment, it's covered it very, very well. The finish is, is definitely matte, it doesn't feel tacky or sticky, but hopefully you can see that there is still a really nice kind of glow to it. It doesn't look really cakey or kind of powdery. It just looks quite natural. I'd say that this is a very skin similar finish, if that makes sense. There is quite a strong smell. It smells kind of floral and perfumey, which I'm not a huge fan of. And also when I first tried it, because fragrance is one of my triggers in products, I was a bit concerned. I haven't noticed any flare ups associated with the fragrance that's in this. I just wanted to make that clear. I know there's a lot of people are sensitive to fragrance, even if it doesn't affect their skin. I know that a lot of people don't like scent on their face. If you are sensitive to fragrance, whether that being just through scent or through kind of sensitive skin, this is something to be aware of. I would go and try it out in the shop if you can. Like I said, I haven't experienced any kind of, I've been wearing this a lot recently. It's one of my favorite foundations at the moment. I haven't experienced any flare ups or reactions or anything like that. So I think although the smell is not great in my opinion. It hasn't been detrimental to my skin at all. I'm going to finish doing the other side of my face. So there we go, that's my whole face covered. As I mentioned before, I've completely fallen in love with this foundation. I just think it's fantastic. I was a bit holding my breath when I bought it because it is expensive and I would have been really annoyed if it had not been very good. <laughs> but I think it's wonderful. I've been using it so much recently. It's really, really great coverage. It applies really, really well. It doesn't feel heavy on the skin at all. It doesn't feel sticky or tacky. It has a really nice glow to it. Perky. If a foundation can be described as perky, 
this is what I think it does to my face. Just perks everything up. It's really, really easy to apply as well. As you saw when I put it on then, I did a kind of light layer all over my face and then all I really needed to do was go in and touch up my cheeks and my cheekbones, which is incredible for me. I don't really want to have to keep going in and touching up different bits and doing layer after layer after layer and building it up. Medium foundations are great and I have some that I really, really love. But if you're in a rush having to build them up and do so many different layers, it's just... Oh. This foundation is huge, huge, huge thumbs up for me. I know that for some people this will be out of their price range. Absolutely, completely understand that. On this channel, I really wanted to be able to do a whole spread of foundations, so high end to low end. I wanted to give as many choices to people as possible. I bought this foundation because I had a voucher and I always think when I have vouchers, I should get things that I would never normally buy for myself because it kind of feels like free money. Does anyone else do that? I kind of hope that everyone else does that. So I went on a bit of a high-end splurge just because I had those vouchers. But again, I still would have been gutted and felt like I'd been kind of cheated out of my hard-earned money if this had been a bit of a letdown. So I'm really, really thrilled that it's so good and that I love it so much. So I'm going to put the rest of my makeup on. I'm gonna do kind of a pretty spring-inspired look as it's so spring-like here today. It's finally stopped raining. I'll see you in a bit. So this is the finished look. I wanted to do a kind of pretty spring, very pink themed look. So obviously my base was the Dior foundation and I actually found when I was doing my face that I didn't really want to put a highlighter on because one, I wanted a fresh, non-powdery finish anyway. But also when I was looking in the mirror, I just didn't feel like I needed it. It looked quite glowy anyway. So I think highlighter probably would have just been a bit much. That's kind of a revelation for me. I don't usually go without highlighter. I usually feel that I look a bit dead without it. Massive thumbs up to the Dior Foundation for that. So I'm gonna put all the details about all of the makeup that I'm wearing now in the information box below, but I thought I'd just do a very quick highlights just to explain what I'm wearing. The standout thing for me is my lips and I'm wearing the Bourjois Rouge Edition Velvet. These are probably the best liquid matte lipsticks on the high street. There's such a massive range of colours. This one is Pink Pong. It still looks a little bit shiny but it does dry down eventually but I'm just really impatient and wanted to finish this video. They apply kind of like a thick gloss and then they dry down to a matte finish. I think they're really long lasting. They're not going to survive an entire like burger or something like that but they wear really well they just kind of start to fade really gently in the middle they don't end up just leaving you with a really obvious lip line they don't flake they don't make your lips feel really really dry I just think they're fantastic can't recommend them enough the other thing that I absolutely love and I haven't worn for a little while is the glow and ray skybreaker lasting silky eyeliner in rosy candy so I'm gonna put my blog post about this underneath because when I first got this I was just like what because I assumed it was a lip line. Why would this be put in with a range of eyeliners? That's really strange. And then I looked and I was like, oh, it's an eyeliner. I was just like, I don't understand why anyone would wear pink eyeliner because you're gonna look either like you've been crying or like you've got some kind of eye disease. But then I wore it and I absolutely fell in love with it. So I put a picture of it on Instagram and loads of people commented on it saying, this looks incredible, I really love it. I don't know if I'd be brave enough to wear it, but I really, really recommend you try it. I think this one only comes in the set. So if it's the only one out of the set that you wanna try, probably not worth the money. But if you find a cheaper high street brand that does a pink eyeliner. Maybe just try it. So I don't know if you'll be able to see. I'm just going to give a quick kind of... I think it looks kind of different. As long as you don't kind of put it on the inner rim of your eyes or kind of line your whole eyes with it, I think you'll avoid the whole myxomatosis look. So I just put that in a little wing on my eyes, nothing too dramatic. And then on my eyes for eyeshadow, I used two of the L'Oreal Paris Colour Riche Mono shadows. This one, which is Chameleon 601, which is kind of an iridescent, bluey, very pretty. So I just put that all over my eyes. And then I chose this matte, La Vie en Rose, which is just a really pretty kind of corally pink. And I put that just in the crease of my eye just to give it a bit more definition. And then lastly, the other standout thing that I use is the Makeup Forever Pro Bronze Fusion. But it looks like this. This is a very subtle, good bronzer for pale skin. It does look really orangey in the pan. It's actually really sheer and you can build it quite well. So I just kind of put it on my cheekbones and in the hollows of my cheeks there just to add a little bit of colour. So quick summary stop me waffling. The Dior Skin Forever Foundation. Love, 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 love. 
massive thumbs up. It gets a little bit of a docked point because it is so expensive, but I think it's incredible. I would happily pay that money for that again, which makes me really annoyed because don't you hate it when you buy something really expensive and your half of you is thinking, please don't let me like this because I don't want to have to buy this again. For something as high coverage, natural, glowy, comfortable and long wearing. Oh, that's what I didn't mention earlier. So I always wear a primer typically and I always look for foundations that have matte finishes. So I did try this without a primer and I've actually found that I've been able to skip a primer when I'm wearing this foundation. <sighs> I know. It's a revelation. I still do occasionally wear a primer with it if I know that I really need it to last, you know, from first thing in the morning to last thing at night if I'm going to an event or something. But for the most part, on a day-to-day -day basis, I don't think I need to wear a primer with this. You know, if you want to add a primer underneath, if you wear one for radiance or if you wear one to improve the texture of your skin or that kind of thing, obviously you can still wear a primer. But if you're worried about oil control, I think this foundation is really, really great for that. So I think all things considered, this foundation is definitely worth the money. I appreciate that some people don't want to spend that amount on a foundation and absolutely understand where you're coming from but for me if I can find a foundation that is this good then I'm happy to pay that amount of money for it. I don't wear it every day it's going to be something that I dip into when I really want something high coverage quick glowy and natural. When it comes to autumn winter it probably won't be what I reach for just because I'm happy in those months to get my glow from highlighter or illuminating primers but for spring and summer I think this is going to be a huge favourite of mine. I hope you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up if you did don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already as always if you look in the information bar below you'll find all of my links to my blog and my social media channels there's also all of the information about the makeup that I've used today as well as some links where to buy them if there are any foundations you would like me to try out for my rosacea review series just let me know in a comment below and I'll check them out thanks again for watching bye oh, I'm gonna sneeze Foslam and kind of that that you know no is that not a no not a good description of what foundation is blah, 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 blah. why can I not talk today what am I saying lost my train of thought. Blah blah blah, why am I telling you this? You do not care. My hair looks a bit like Spaniel's ears today. It's obviously not the look I was going for. Information bar below. Information bar below. Information bar below. Information bar below. So presumptuous. What? I'm just gonna shave my head. A high end foundation foundation. It's just called Dior Forever. I don't know. what They put all this information on the front and I just read it out like it's the name. <laughs> uh.